the day has finally arrived. Josh Harris is the new owner. That other guy we're never going to mention again, he's gone. The other owners have approved it. The bank has closed on it. We're going to talk all about it on the Daily Commanders Update for 21 July with Mitch Tischler from the Beltway Football Pod. Let's go. <music> Greetings and salutations. Welcome to the Daily Commanders Update here on Ref the District. It is Friday, 21 July. And man, I can't contain my excitement. Today is finally the day. We got our team back. And we're going to talk all about it with Mitch Tischler from the Beltway Football Pod. Before we do, make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And by all means, hit the notification so you know when we're going live. I'm going to stop talking. We're going to get out there to the pep rally at FedEx with Mitch Tischler. Let's go to it right now. All right, Mitch, thank you so much for joining us here on Ref the District. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely. So, Mitch, I know you've had a long day out at FedEx and and just kind of give us an idea because we didn't none of us got a chance to get out there. Give us an idea what the atmosphere is like out there today. The atmosphere out here was incredible. I, I mean, it, it was the most excited I've seen fans since maybe when RG3 was here. Um, wow. We were sitting inside in the press box kind of afterwards. We were recording our podcast and talking about, you know, just the, the fan enthusiasm and excitement. And, you know, when Josh Harris walked out and addressed the crowd um, out in the Legends uh, Plaza, you know, the fans started chanting, thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh. And it was just so reminiscent for me of the RG3, you know, RG3 of yesteryear. There, there were a ton of folks here and people were so excited. I mean, it was euphoric kind of watching the fans take in everything, you know, Ali, you had Magic Johnson and Burgundy and Gold walking out, talking about how, you know, he doesn't buy buy teams for his ego. He buys teams to, to win. And uh, I, today was just an incredible day out here at FedEx. And, and uh, you know, it's not often we're able to say that. Yeah, isn't that crazy that Magic is out there just talking all about the Burgundy and Gold and D.C. and, and all the love? I- that's a crazy thought that that Magic Johnson is now a an owner of the Washington Commanders. Yeah, I mean, and and Josh Harris and Mitchell Rails as well. I mean, you have two guys who are so accomplished in business. I love the fact that local guys and that they have that tie to you know those core memories at RFK and you know walking down you know the stadium and you know we want Dallas and all those different things. Dan Snyder had that as well and. The difference here is that these guys have the business acumen to back it up. They've built companies from the ground in the multi, you know, billion international, you know, crazy, you know, valuation companies. And and then you have Josh Harris, who, you know, has done that as well. But not to mention, oh, he's brought back the 76ers and the, and the New Jersey Devils, you know, to respectability and to the playoffs every year. I had one buddy who's a big 76ers fan. He goes... Hey, you're gonna hate Josh Harris, and I was like, "What?" And he's like, "He's like, yeah, they get bounced out of the playoffs, you know, every year. They never make it far." And I was like, "You know what? How much Commanders fans would kill to be in the playoffs every single year to have the yeah. opportunity to just to be there and win? You know, it's we'll get to advancing in the playoffs. Let's get to a point of respectability, you know, a point where you're winning football games and you're discussing, oh, maybe they didn't make it far enough this year. They need to make it further. I mean, it, it's it's." amazing you know the, the excitement and and the and the stability that i think this group is going to bring to uh to burgundy and gold nation yeah we'll we'll get we'll cross that bridge when we get there first we got to get to that bridge before we start worrying about early playoff exits um right. i want to do a, a few quotes from uh some folks who were there with you today like uh nikki javala says i in quotes it was a very very different feel at fedex today uh end quote uh, it was. Scotty, I mean, the uh, quote, this is bonkers. I can't believe what I'm saying. And even uh, your buddy JP Finley from the, uh, from your pod there says, quote, most fun day at FedEx field. Some or since at least RG three's rookie year, maybe ever. And last one I want to read you, Mitch is from John Kime, the most level headed beat reporter, probably in the country. And he says, quote, I have not seen the level of enthusiasm that I saw today by the fan base in a long, long time. It indeed is a new day, unquote. I've been saying it forever. And 
you know, I don't know how many, you know, folks agree, but I think this fan base is a sleeping giant, you know? Yeah. Yes, it's been degraded and it's come down and you don't have the season ticket wait list and plenty of folks, you know, went away from the team because of Dan and, you know, you know, fandom has changed so much over the years, but I think that you're going to see an awakening in the DMV and, and, you know, beyond amongst, you know, fans of this team that, that that's unmatched. I, that September 10th game against the Cardinals mm. is going to be absolutely bananas. You know, you're going to, I think you're going to start seeing FedEx turn in to a home field advantage in some regards. And it's been so long since that happened. I mean, today was just the pep rally, you know, introduction of the ownership group. And when you were driving in, I, I couldn't get off at, couldn't get off at Landover drive because the cars were back all the way up onto the beltway. I had to go up around central Avenue and kind of back around, you know, the, the, the back way getting into the stadium. And when I came up, there were fans lined up, you know, halfway around the stadium waiting to get in. And that's just for a pep rally with, you know, some owners who you can be excited about, but you don't really know, you know, who these guys are. We're not talking about real football games. I, I, I'm so excited to see, you know, the, this enthusiasm and, and this fan base kind of make their way back to what we know it was when we were, you know, when we were growing up and, and when the football team was winning. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you think let's kind of transition this into the football side of it how do you think this enthusiasm and this new new dawn of a new day and a, it's almost like a it, uh, it's almost like a you know a franchise that just got awarded and how do you think that translates to the football field in terms of um, success I think the stability uh, amongst ownership mm -hmm. is huge and John Allen and Terry McLaurin were here today and they talked about just not having to answer those questions and being able mm -hmm. to, you know, concentrate on, on what they want to concentrate on. Uh, you know, I, you can already, they already are talking about spending money kind of in the right places. You know, you had a previous owner who didn't care to update FedEx field or, you know, the facility very often unless other money was being infused in it. And already you have this new ownership group talking about wanting to fix, you know, the ingress and egress issues at FedEx field and, you know, wanting to talk about spending money in the weight room and where it makes sense, the training table, the different places for these players, uh, you know, it's just such a different, it's such a professional atmosphere and it's been one day. And I don't expect yeah. that fans are going to, you know, walk in on September 10th and notice, you know, everything is brand new and different. It's going to take time for them to, you know, figure out where they need to spend money and what they need to do to improve and make everything better. But at the end of the day, the fact that they're willing to do it and are planning to do it is such a huge uh, upgrade. What happens on the football field this year? I don't know that, you know, this ownership group makes a ton of difference other than, you know, allowing the players to concentrate and the front office and the coaches to concentrate on what matters. But it's something that I think you're going to start seeing build year after year after year as they start figuring out where they need to, you know, make things better. And I think you'll see that, that trickle down to the football field. And there's no rest for the weary for you and, and all the beat reporters and, and everybody. I mean, rookies reported today, camp officially starts on Tuesday and, and all that. What are you looking most forward to uh, in camp in terms of on the field, maybe uh, matchups or progression of uh, players improving? Uh, for me, I, the, the most important thing that I think is going to happen once they get pads on is to see the O-line, D-line, you know, drills. Not necessarily the one-on-one -on -one drills because there's only so much you can take from those, but more how the line lines up, how, more how the line does kind of as a group and as it relates to kind of Eric Bannamy's offense because I think this offense has a ton of playmakers and has the ability to be explosive. It's going to come down to Sam Howell and the offensive line and sure. seeing those guys work together, not just how they block, you know, straight up, you know, a four-man uh, pass rush, but also how the enemy moves around the pocket, how he creates situations for Sam Howell to be free to be able to throw the ball. And then ultimately to see, you know, Sam complete those passes and, you know, do better, you know, do better than uh, what we saw occasionally in, uh, in OTAs and minicamps. Because mm -hmm. one thing we want to see is Sam not make the same mistake twice. Sure. Sure. And uh, before we let you go, Mitch, I, I got to ask the question because it's, it's a big topic. It's a very divisive topic, but the big time, do you think, I'm just going to ask you if you think, so do you think at some point the name will ever get changed? And I don't mean changed back, just changed. Here's what I think. If 
if they're going to name the chain, if they're going to change the name. To me, what makes the most sense is when they open a brand new stadium, whatever year that may be, 20, mm-hmm. 2031, you know, open, open a new stadium and open it with a new name. If at that point fans are still upset, I understand I, the owners are saying all the right things and they're, they're exciting a lot of the fan base with this uh, name change talk. If that's something that they make a priority early on in their ownership, to me, that's an issue because there's so many other problems in this franchise that need to get taken care of first. And that's from ownership to upper management, to middle management, to coaches, to the coaching staff, to facilities, to stadium, to equipment, to everything from the top to the bottom. This, this organization has not been run like other NFL franchises. And those are immediate changes that need to be made that will solidify the organization and ultimately make the product on the football field better. And if they're split their time and money, because we know that this is, isn't a cheap thing to do in terms of the rebrand, if they split their time and money early on in, in doing a rebrand again, I, I just think it's misplaced. I understand Commander's the name isn't the most you know beloved thing, and sure. fans don't feel like it's their franchise anymore. But if they're able to make this team a winner, fans will start coming around on Commanders as a name. And then ultimately, if they decide after, you know, some winning seasons that it's not that's not good enough. Great. New stadium, new name. Go from there. But to me, it's it's not something that needs to be addressed day one, year one. It's something that that that's a that's a that's a a B or C list uh, priority in in, in my eyes. So uh, do I think ultimately it gets changed? I'm going to say no, even though the owners are saying the right things right now. Yeah, I, I probably, I probably agree with you. If, if it happens to get changed, it's definitely way down the road and, and not looking forward to that. If it ever does happen, that whole, uh, that whole thing. I have a quick, I have a quick story for you. So yeah, my work, our work had us do um, and ask me anything, you know, AMA uh, in 2017. And someone asked, uh, when do I think the Redskins, are going to win the Super Bowl, And I said, 2026 in, in 2017, I said, 2026 is my guess for the first Redskins Super Bowl. If this franchise wins the Super Bowl before changing the name, I can't imagine that folks, are, no one's going to care. Everyone's going to be so damn excited to watch this team win on the field every Sunday and parade down Pennsylvania Avenue that no one's going to be concerned about, about the, you know, the terrible commander's name or, or whatever it may be. If they can figure out a way to win right there at FedEx field, you know, right in front of me, I think that takes care of so many of the other problems and complaints and issues that the fan base has. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like you, like you said, Mitch, you're right there at FedEx field. We appreciate you taking the time. It was a big day with the press conference and the introduction of the owners and, and a pep rally and fans and legends and current players and all that. And I know you want to get home and, and, and relax a little bit. So appreciate you taking the time. Uh, to spend with us uh, here on the show today. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. That was fun. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and you know the whole drill. And uh, of course, until next time, be a fan. Be a fan.